Hello and welcome to the iHunter walkthrough. I'm going to go over the menus, drawers, and features of the iHunter app. The main view of the iHunter app is the map view. Your current location is represented by the blue dot. To zoom in and out, you can double tap, pinch the screen, or use the plus and minus buttons on the bottom right of the map. Map layer boundaries are displayed on the map. If you tap on the map, you will see a list of each boundary that encompasses where you've tapped. The color of the icon on the left of the boundary name represents the color of the boundary on the map. Tapping on the hunting zone will bring you to the season summary for that zone. Each row is a single season. Some seasons contain restriction buttons that provide important restrictions and other information. The season summaries are split into three tabs. Big Game, Predators, and Birds and Small Game. The buttons at the bottom of this view link you to important resources such as the Provincial Hunting Regulations. The bottom right button in this view allows you to apply a filter to the season summary. This is useful if you want to filter out archery seasons for example. Now back to the map view. Tapping on a boundary row in the pop-up will display information about the boundary or parcel. Sometimes it is just a notice with a brief description, and sometimes it is more detailed. The pop-up also contains a number of buttons along the bottom that all provide actions or information based on the tap location. From left to right, there is the Add Waypoint button to add a waypoint. Then there is the Weather button which will show you current weather information for this location. The third button is the Go To button which will provide a straight line from your location to this tap location, allowing you to direct yourself to the waypoint. Finally, there is the Driving Directions button which will provide driving directions to that location. iHunter has two main types of layers, base maps and map layers. Base maps are the map that you see below all of the other layers and are typically satellite, road, hybrid, or sometimes topographic maps. Map layers are any other map layer that sits over top of the base map. There are two buttons in the bottom left of the map that allow you to manage these base maps and map layers. The bottommost button is the base maps menu. From here you can choose the base map. You can choose between road, satellite, hybrid and topographic maps. Note that some of the base maps are cacheable for offline use. Please see the link in the description for the iHunter Cached Maps video for more information on caching maps for offline use. From this menu you can also add your own base map by tapping the Add Base Map button at the bottom and entering a WMS or TMS map URL. Please see the link in the description for a video dedicated to WMS and TMS map layers. The uppermost button is the map layers menu. From here you will see a number of sections depending on the province. The first section includes all built-in map layers. The colored switches allow you to turn the layers on and off and represent the color of the boundary shown on the map. You can adjust the color of the boundary by tapping on the settings button then tapping the color at the bottom of the settings menu. This section also includes user added map layers which can be added using WMS and TMS URLs from the add a map layer button. Some of these map layers are built in and will have a description of always available offline and the others would need to be cached for offline use. Please see the iHunter cached maps video link in the description for more information on caching maps for offline use. Next, if there is a subscription available for your province, you will see a subscription layers section. If the subscription is not currently active, you can purchase the subscription here. If it is purchased, you will see a list of all of the subscription map layers here and you can interact with them similarly to the base map layers section. Next, if there are landowner maps available for purchase in your province, you will see a list of the landowner maps here. Landowner maps are essentially the same as paper maps that you can purchase from RMs and counties, However they can be set to be semi-transparent so that you can see the base map underneath, they will show you your current location, and they are purchasable from anywhere that you have cellular service. Note that these maps can be cached for offline use. For more information on the landowner maps, please see the iHunter landowner maps link in the description. You will notice a search bar along the top of the iHunter map. This search bar will search all boundaries, waypoints, tracks, 
drawings, as well as do a Google search for locations of interest. You can also search a latitude and longitude coordinate to jump to that location. The left button of the search bar will minimize the search bar to maximize the map view real estate, and the right browse button will allow you to browse and search individual map layers. At the bottom of the iHunter app, there are five buttons which will open drawers. Each drawer has a question mark at the top right that can be used to provide a brief help page for that drawer. The first drawer on the bottom left is the waypoints drawer. From here you can view all of your waypoints, tracks, and drawings. If you have marked any waypoints, tracks, or drawings as favorites, they will show up under the favorites header. Below that, you will see three buttons and a link. If you want to add a waypoint at a specific location, you can use the enter coordinates link which will allow you to add a waypoint at a specified latitude and longitude, DMS, NGRS, or UTM location. From the buttons below you can add a waypoint at your current location, start a tracking session, or draw and measure on the map. The waypoint button will bring you to the add waypoint view where you can create a waypoint at your current location. From here you can scroll to choose from a number of waypoint markers with six different waypoint colors, add a name and description, and attach photos. Clicking the green check mark at the top will create the waypoint on the map. The tracking button will start a tracking session that will track your movements until you end it. Ending the tracking session will bring up the add track view which will allow you to choose a track icon, a name, and a description and then save it to the map by clicking on the green check mark at the top right. The drawing button will switch the map to a drawing mode where you can draw and measure on the map. In the bar along the bottom, there are a number of buttons. The first button on the left is to go back and cancel your drawing. The next button is to select your drawing tool. You can choose from freehand, rectangles, circles, and lines. The next button is to choose the color for your markups. The button after that is the eraser tool which is fairly self-explanatory and allows you to erase your drawing. The next button is the pan and zoom button which allows you to move the map around just as you would if you weren't in the drawing mode. And finally, the green check mark on the right will allow you to save the drawing. At the top of this view, you will see switches to toggle on or off the distances and areas labels. When you save the drawing, you will be brought to the Add Drawing view where you can choose the pin marker and enter a name and description. Now back to the main view. The next button along the bottom bar opens the viewing drawer. The viewing drawer gives you the tools to control how your map behaves and helps you navigate within it. The Save Current View button can be used to create a quick access shortcut to get back to the same spot in the future. Once you have a view saved, you can easily zoom to it, or set it as your startup view when the iHunter app starts. The Map Tools section allows you to center the map on your location, zoom the map to you, or set the map mode. The Free Map Mode is the default mode when the app starts, and allows you to freely pan and zoom the map. The Centered Mode keeps your position in the center of the map, but allows you to change the zoom level. Compass mode keeps your position centered, and rotates the map based on where your phone is pointing. The middle button opens the location drawer. The location drawer provides you with information about your GPS position, boundaries which you are in, hunting start and stop times, and weather and wind conditions. With the drawer open, you can quickly see the moon phase, sunrise and sunset times, and hunt start and stop times based on your current GPS position. You can scroll the view to the right to see the same information for upcoming dates to help plan your future hunts. If you want to see the weather at your location, just tap the forecast link. At a glance, you can also see your location, altitude, and accuracy of your GPS signal here. If your GPS accuracy is less than 20 meters, a green indicator is shown beside it. The indicator is yellow when your accuracy is between 20 and 40 meters and red when it is greater than 40 meters. If your GPS accuracy is in the yellow or red zone, you will also see the indicator on the location button. If you want to share your location with an iHunter contact over chat, 
via email, or with a text, just tap the share link to do so. Finally, all of the hunting zones and other integrated boundaries which you are currently within are shown in the current zones section. Tap on the current zones item to get a full list. The fourth button on the bottom bar opens the messages and chat drawer. This drawer allows you to build a list of hunting partners with whom you can share waypoints, chat, and broadcast your location to. Messages from the iHunter team are also displayed to help get important information out to you as quickly as possible. Tap on the iHunter messages row to see news and notifications from the iHunter team and partners. To add contacts, use the add link. Enter the email address or name of the person you would like to add and then press search. Note that the results will contain exact matches only. If they have an account, you can select their name and press the green checkmark to send them a request. They will receive the request and once they accept it, you will be able to chat. Once you have some contacts, you can add them to a group by tapping on the add link and then tapping create group. Select the group members and then tap the green checkmark. Once you have some contacts or a group chat, you can send messages, share waypoints, share your current location, or start broadcasting your location. Note that you need cellular service for all of these chat features. The last button on the bottom bar is the iHunter button which contains account information, settings, resources, and help. If you are on an iPhone, you will notice a change province link at the top of this menu. Tap this to return to the province selection view where you can switch between provinces. This doesn't exist in the Android app as there is a separate app for each province. Next, you will see the login option. Tap on this to log in and create an iHunter account. We strongly advise you to use an iHunter account in order to back up your waypoints, tracks, and drawings. The iHunter login is also required to use the chat system. Once logged in, you can tap on this row to edit your username or modify your profile picture. Next is the help and support section. Tap on this to view FAQs, tutorials, app information, and a list of available help files. Next is the my purchases section. Tap here to view the list of purchases associated with your Apple ID or Google account, as well as any purchases that are being shared to your app from other platforms. If you are using an iPhone, there will be a reactivate previous purchases button which you should use if you ever notice any of your purchases are not showing up. This will query the Apple App Store and reapply any purchases that are linked to your Apple ID. On Android this step is automatically done every time you open the app. The app settings row will bring you to a settings menu where you can adjust a number of options in the app, including coordinate systems and measurement units. Next, is an optional Alberta-only feature called the AB Hunt Log. There is a link in the description for more information on this program. Finally, you will see a section for resources. In this section you will see links to documents and contacts, media or partners, and iHunter merchandise. That brings us to the end of this iHunter walkthrough. Please email us at info at iHunterApp.com if you have any questions.